بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and his entire household, all of them, without exception. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, without exception. We also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all the messengers who came before such as Jesus, may peace be upon him, Abraham, may peace be upon him, Moses, may peace be upon him, and all the messengers and their companions, may Allah bless them all, for indeed, they have struggled, strove, in order to get the goodness to the people, in order to empower people with that which will take them to the promised life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the acceptance into the promised life, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it the best of all lives. For indeed, that is what we have been promised. My brothers and sisters, I want to start off by saying something absolutely important. And that is, when you came to this world, when you arrived here on earth, what was your condition? What happened as you were born? Do you remember or were you told? Or have you witnessed someone coming to this earth? 
the first thing that they do is cry. If they don't cry, they are made to cry. Do you know that? I'm sure from amongst you, there are midwives and there are those who are perhaps doctors, gynecologists, etc. And you would know that if a child did not cry, you would tap the child in order to make it cry. The lungs would open, everything would happen. But more than that, for me, it's like a child saying, you know what, I've come onto earth. And earth is all about crying. You're going to cry for as long as you're alive. That's what it is. And then what happens? Truly, you cry, and you cry when you're hungry, and you cry when your nappy is dirty, and you cry when you are feeling too hot, and you cry, for example, when you are in fear, and you cry when there is a sound, and you cry when you are not attended to, and as you grow older, you cry for the same reasons. You cry because you cannot earn money, you cry because you don't have a spouse, you cry because your spouse is troubling and harassing and hassling, you cry because your children are troubling and harassing, you cry because the environment is troubling you, you cry for so many different reasons, you cry because there is war, because people are dying, because we don't want to see people dying, we want to see peace, but we keep on crying because we don't see what we want to see. So this world is all about crying, it's all about challenges. From the moment you're born up to the time you die, you will be shedding tears. That is why we have the tear gland. And that is why our eyes need to be wiped from time to time. The one who sheds the tear for the right reason is the one who will be granted the promised life. So what is shedding the tear for the right reason? It's okay to cry when you're hungry. It's okay to cry when you are fearing. It's okay to cry when you've lost a loved one. But have you ever cried out of the fear of Allah? Have you ever cried out of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Have you ever cried out of anticipation that you would like to go to the promised life where there will be no more tears? Have you cried? This is why there is a hadith that I've spoken about so many times and I'm sure many of you would know about this hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks quite clearly about seven categories of people who will be achieving a specific VIP shade on the Day of Judgment. From amongst them, رَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَخَاضَتْ عَيْنَاهُ رَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَخَاضَتْ عَيْنَاهُ A man or a woman who remembers his maker sincerely and sheds a tear. Or the eyes are filled with tears. This hadith is so beautiful that it speaks about the high status of the person, not who cried, but the person whose eyes were filled with the tears, not yet dropped down. Father Tainahu. And thereafter, obviously, the tears would drop, but once your eyes are filled with the tears and they overflow, already you deserve a special place in the promised life. From the moment you die, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of you. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِّمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Allah speaks about the best of those who speak. We all talk. When we were born, there was no speech, but we still cried. When we grow older, we speak, but we still cry. And we still feel that something is lacking. So Allah says, who is the one who uses his speech in the best way? This verse I just read before you, Allah says, who is there better in speech than the one who calls towards Allah? Meaning you call towards the maker. When I am calling you towards Allah, or you are calling me towards Allah, who are you actually calling me towards? You are calling me towards the one who made me. That's all. You are reminding me to say, you know what? You were somewhere before you were born, and you are going somewhere after you die, and this life is very temporary. Don't be lost in this life, but rather focus on that which will lead to returning to your maker in a way that you don't regret how you spent your life. Many of us, we spend our lives doing what we want to do. How many of us spend our lives doing what the one who made us wants us to do? Quite simple. Ask yourself, do I just do what I want to do? 
Or do I do what the one who made me wants to do? Because I am definitely going to go back to him. When a person passes away, what do we say? We say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. What does that mean? We belong to Allah. If I am 40 years old, for example, where was I 41 years ago? Where was I? Well, where will I be if I'm going to live for 80 years, for example, or 70 years? Where will I be after 80 years? I need to think about it. I need to consider the fact that I must worship my maker alone in order for me to get somewhere that he has promised. So this is why we say, who is there better in speech than the one who reminds you that you're going back? To who? To your maker. The one who calls towards Allah. And himself, he does good deeds. A lot of the times, we wake our children up for salah. We want our children to quit smoking, but we are smoking ourselves. We want our children to read salah, but we don't read salah ourselves. We want our children to be modest, but we are not modest ourselves. We want our children to be protected from immorality, and we keep on reminding them, but we have not protected ourselves from immorality. How is that, my brothers and sisters? Why be hypocritical? Yes, you are allowed to keep on reminding them, but remind yourself as well. Hey, I need my child to become a better person. Let me become a better person first. Let me become a better person first, or let me become a better person hand in hand with my child. And sometimes our children will remind us to turn back to Allah. You know Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, what a powerful example of his. He is the one who reminded his father. He saw his father doing so many things. And he tells his father, Ya abati inni qad ja'ani min al-ilmi ma lam ya'tika fattabi'ni O my father, knowledge has come to me that did not come to you. So follow me and I will guide you to the straight path. Who is saying this to who? A child is saying it to his father. And Allah recorded this in the Quran so that we can remember that when our children correct us, we should not feel bad. We should take that correction. We should understand it's a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my beloved brothers and sisters in this beautiful city of Zambawanga, remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the best speech is from the one who calls towards or reminds about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and does good deeds themselves. Be truthful, be honest. Worship Allah alone. Try your best to reach out to the rest of the creatures of Allah. Be a, be a promoter of peace and tolerance, coexistence and goodness. Do not be a promoter of violence, hatred, killing and intolerance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. Amen. So Allah says, And the same person says, I am from among those who surrenders. What is the meaning of Muslim? Muslim means one who surrenders to the command of Allah. So there is no point in not surrendering to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet you want others to surrender to the command of Allah. No, you need to say I'm a Muslim and you need to mean it. You need to mean it. So if we are weak and we are Muslim by name only, but our actions are not according to Islam, it's time to change that. My brothers and sisters, you're not going to live forever. You're going to return to Allah. If you think you are the only one who has problems and therefore it's driving you away from Allah, I want you to consider the following. I'm repeating that. If you think you are the only one with problems, and if those problems are driving you away from Allah because you are weak, you know, some people are sick and ill. Some people are looking for a job. Some people are looking for a wife or a husband. Some people are looking, for example, to have children and they don't have children and it's already been 8 years, 10 years, 12 years, 15 years. May Allah bless you with children. Some people need cure. May Allah cure you. So sometimes Allah prolongs the time. So what happens is people become depressed. They become sad because they don't realize that Allah knows better. I have had a friend of mine who lost his children after he had those children after a long, long time. And he lost them in a car crash. And he told me, 
I used to make dua to Allah to grant me children for many years. Had I known that this was going to happen, I would have said, Oh Allah, do what you know is better for me. But I still told him, Allah knew that this is better for you, so he did it. You have to bear sabr twice, two times. One is the fact that you did not have children for so long, and two is the fact that Allah took them away after giving them to you. So Allah loves you enough to give you two examinations. You qualified from high school, and now you will qualify from university as well. Don't become upset when you have more tests in your life. Many of us, when we need a job and they tell us that you need a certain certificate or a certain qualification, what do we do? We go out, we work, we pay fees in order to write the exam and we make sure we work hard and we want to pass and we want to get a certificate to say that I wrote the examination, now I'm qualified to get this job. Well, you want the job of earning Jannah and paradise and the promised life and the goodness in the year after, you will be tested. You don't have to pay fees. Allah will test you one after the other. One examination, you must pass. How do you pass the exam? Through sabr. So, the point I want you to consider is, if your test is turning you away from Allah, you need to know there are people who follow other faiths, who have the same test or even worse. Sometimes people say, you know, I'm a Muslim, I've been sick for so long, and here there are people, for example, from a satanic cult or any other faith, and they said they will pray for me and I will be cured, let me go and follow them. Well, you are failing your test because I have seen people from the same other faith who have the same sickness for 20 years, but they have stayed in their own faith. What about you? You're a Muslim. I recall once I visited the hospital. And this is the true story. And the young person said, I think I'm going to change religions because uh, Islam, I'm not being cured. I'm praying to Allah for so long. I said, hang on, my brother. I want you to consider the fact that that religion you are planning to go into now, there are people with your disease and with worse than your disease. Can I show you who they are and where they are? And they have been suffering the diseases for longer than you. But the difference is you have hope in the mercy of Allah for the promised life. Even if this life is not 100%. Nobody's life will ever be 100% until you get to paradise. I'm sure you've heard me say in the past that paradise loses its value or paradise will lose its value if this world was free of problems. If Allah gave you whatever you wanted, What's the point of giving me Jannah? I will say, oh Allah, I don't want paradise because I already have a paradise here. Nothing goes wrong. Even the richest and the happiest, one day they will stop breathing. You know that? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. The most powerful from amongst us, one day they will be helpless, completely laying. People will have to carry them to the grave. Who were they? They were powerful. They used to harm people or they used to serve people. So don't be fooled by the devil. Similarly, who does Allah love more? You and I or the messengers? May peace be upon them. Definitely the messengers. Allahu yasfafi min al-malaikati rusulahu wa min al-nas. Allah chooses from among the angels, those whom he wants to give messages to and make messengers. And he chooses from mankind as well. He chooses whom he wants to be messengers. May peace be upon them all and may peace be upon us all as well. Amen. So if Allah chooses these messengers, he made them better than you and I. Muhammad, may peace be upon him. We know him as Afbalul Khalqi wa Akramul Rusuli. Have you heard that? We know him as the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets. Who is he? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's look at his life for a moment. He went through hardship, he went through difficulty, he went through people who tried to harm him, he went through people who made him bleed, he went through people who threw stones at him, they laughed at him, he went through people who accused him, he lost his children while he was alive, all of them besides one. He lost all of his children to death, all of them besides one who passed away after he passed away. He lost his parents, he was an orphan. What else? Think of anything negative, subhanallah. He was the happiest, the most noble, the most loved to Allah. Up to today when we hear his name, we say peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
when he was passing away, he tells his wife Aisha radiallahu anha that or oh, his daughter Fatima radiallahu anha that your father will not taste any pain after today. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Listen to what Allah says about the messengers. Allah says regarding the promised life and Jannah. Am hasibatum an tadkhulul jannah? Do you really think you are going to go to paradise? Do you really think you are going to go to paradise? That's a question asked by Allah. And he continues to say, Do you really think that you are going to paradise yet the following things have not yet come to you? Do you really think you are going to paradise and the following things have not yet come to you? What is he talking about? Listen to what he says. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا do you think that you are going to paradise and it has not yet come to you that which came to those before you they were affected by hardship difficulty warfare insecurity and they were shaken up until the believers and the messengers from amongst them had to ask when is the help of Allah going to come? Allah says indeed the help of Allah is very near. This means those before us were tested, they were shaken, they went through hardship, they went through difficulty. They asked Allah, Oh Allah, when is your help coming? We need your help. Oh Allah, when is your help coming? And Allah says, don't worry, my help is very near. Sometimes the solution to our problem, we were digging, 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 digging. And we have five centimeters left and we just give up and we walk away. Had you dug one more, you would have gone through the tunnel. So don't lose hope because you don't know how much is left to get to the other side. And when it comes to paradise, for as long as you are breathing, you will be able to earn it if you do the right things. Now this is just an introduction to my topic by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because I would like to concentrate on what comes afterwards. But I had to start this way in order for us to appreciate what comes later. I cannot speak about paradise in a way that we would say, oh yeah, you know, that's one of those things we see. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, it's only if you know how you were born and the reality of this life that you will understand the sweetness of the hereafter. Look, when a person passes away, do they die crying? That's a question. Or you see them just lying there, smiling. They say, rest in peace. Have you heard that? Rest in peace. And they are laying there, no movement, nothing, no crying. You can slap, smack, poke, do what you want. Sorry, don't do that, please. I'm just giving an example, okay? You can actually say, scream, swear, spread rumor, you are not harming them anymore. It's over. They won't cry. It's done. Some people cremate. They cremate. What happens? They burn. And this person is just there, being burnt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. I always wonder what would actually happen if we really felt that. What if Allah wanted us to feel that? And those people cannot yell anymore, but they can feel what's going on. This is why let's stick to what we were taught from the time of Adam alayhi salatu was salam to bury respectfully as soon as possible and to grant them their rights that need to be fulfilled. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us the day he takes us away. So when a person passes away, that's the time they are at peace. They are smiling. They are gone. What's happening to them? Allah knows and they know. Allah knows and they know. We have hope. We have hope. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. You know, something came to my mind. We have something in common. You know, they say there was a ship. Okay. There was a ship. And this ship 
was sinking. Okay. So what happened is they needed to throw some people out of the ship in order to make it light so that the ship does not sink. It's too heavy, too many people. So they decided how are we going to start? It's going to be a big problem because so many people we are going to be fighting. We can't say the oldest, we can't say the youngest, we can't say the strongest, we can't say... So let's think about something. The captain says, look, I have a list of all the people and where they come from. So I will start off. So they, he started off and right at the top, those nations starting with A, those areas starting with A, and he started, I don't want to say the names, but anyway, you can think of any names. And he started kicking people. And you and I were so happy because we come from Zambawanga, don't we? Mashallah. Z, right at the bottom. A, B, C. By the time they get to about R, we're already happy. Hey, we're there, man. Mashallah. So I come from Zambawabwa, and you come from Zambawanga. Doesn't it sound the same? Mashallah. Mashallah. Yeah? Zimbabwe. Alhamdulillah. That's the common factor we have. Alhamdulillah. So we were saved. By what? By the alphabet. The English alphabet. That's just on a lighter note. May Allah save us on the day of Qiyamah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, if you spend your life in a beautiful way, even though you have gone through challenges, you went through hardship, Allah did not promise you that you're not going to go through hardship. You will go through tough times. People will say things about you. They will spread rumor about you. My, I can give you my own example. Whenever I go through difficulty, I ask myself, did the messenger peace be upon him go through this? And up to today, 100% of the times, the answer is yes. 100% of the time. Did he go through hardship? People making his life difficult? Yes. People saying he was after this, he was after that, he wanted power, he wanted this, he wanted name and fame. They said everything about him. Don't worry. You are a nobody compared to the messengers. May peace be upon them. If they struggle, you need to expect to struggle even more. But Allah knows you and I are weak. He does not make us go through more than what he made the messengers go through. This is why Allah says, Inna Allah ida ahabba abdan ittalah. When Allah loves the worshipper, He tests him more. Take a look at those who have bigger tests. They are those who are closer to Allah. One of the reasons is, every time you go through a test, you are getting closer to Allah. Look at us who are seated here. When you are young and you are okay and you are growing up and you are healthy and your parents are taking care of everything, sometimes you are weak with your prayer. You are weak with calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you grow older. And now your examination, the main exam comes. What happens? For the first time in your life, you are reading salah because you want to say, Oh Allah, Oh Allah. I have an examination, help me. SubhanAllah. Allah brought you close to Him through an examination. If that was not the case, you maybe were not going to even call out to Allah. Then when you grow older and suddenly your knee starts paining, what happens? The doctor says, look, we tried everything we saw, but we don't know. You start to get up for salat, tahajjud. You know what is tahajjud? Why tahajjud? Because you have a problem, that's why. So what did Allah do? Allah brought you close to him by giving you a problem for you. It's a problem for him. He loves you because he says, Hey, my worshiper, you are crying for me. You are worshiping me. You are sincerely calling to me. Now you are acknowledging I am your Lord. You are acknowledging I am in charge. I am in control. I love you. You know what? I want to keep you like this for 10 more years. No, 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 no. Allah wants to keep you like that. He says, but I love you. So you say, oh Allah, I promise you, if you cure me, I will read the Hajjud for the rest of my life. Have you heard that? Oh Allah, I promise. Why are you promising? Because you know Allah loves you in that condition and you want to tell him, please don't keep me in the condition. I know I'm being a good boy, I'm being a good girl, but I want to tell you when I'm finished with all this, I'm still going to be a good girl and a good boy. And guess what? You get cured and the next day, no Tahajjud. Subhanallah, may Allah grant us cure and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us sincere. Did you see how Allah brings you closer to Him through problems? Did you see that? And did you know why Allah keeps you sometimes in those issues and problems and difficulties? That is Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. So, amazingly, 
as a person grows older, subhanallah, and they happen to pass away, the most difficult things that happen to human beings on earth, birth and death. Birth is so difficult, not only for the mother, even for the child. But the beauty is, the child doesn't remember. It was so hard, even for the child. And the lungs inflate, and the eyes open, and there is a big change, and you don't know, and some people die in the process, and so many things happen, but you don't know, because it is fear of the unknown. I want to give you an example. Twins in the womb are talking to each other. One is saying, look how cozy it is here. Wow, yeah. Do you know? I wonder if there's life after the womb. You listening? And the other one says, no ways, they can't be. This is the life, man. This is the life. Look, we're happy here. It's warm. We're turning and twisting. Our food is available. Everything is okay. We're enjoying ourselves. We are living in a beautiful place. And that's it. It's just the two of us, you and me. That's it. And the other one says, no, I'm sure there has to be something beyond this. It can't just be like this. We're just here for nine months and that's it. Nine months after that, there must be something. There has to be. And the first one is saying, are you stupid? Are you a fool? How can you think like that? We are here, there is nothing after this. It's over, we are just here, we can enjoy, do what we want, and thereafter what will happen? We are finished, it's gone. And suddenly nine months comes, and they are getting bigger and bigger, and guess what? They can't fit anymore. And now they are saying, well, I wonder what's going to be next. We're going to die, it's over. Listen carefully, this is a powerful example. They say we're going to die and it's finished. We're going to die. And suddenly they are born and it's so difficult and they come into the real life. And you know what happens? <sighs> Have you heard that? And the two of them are now communicating. Hey, it's such a big place. And guess what? There are so many others screaming just like us in this hospital, man. Woo! Subhanallah! And as a Muslim, the first sound they should be hearing is Adhan. Do you know that? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And part of that Adhan is Hayya ala salah. I'm sure we've heard that, right? Why? You are reminded from the beginning, your purpose here is to come to salah, to come to success, to declare Allah is the greatest, to believe in Allah and to believe in the messenger. That's your purpose. Now they are here, they say, wow, hey, sometime back we never believed that we were going to live another life. For us, it was just a womb and we thought we were going to die. And the other guy says, but I told you, wallahi, my brothers and sisters, in life, it's exactly the same. There are people who say it's only this life we are going to die. And there are the believers who say, hang on, there is something bigger and better that is waiting for us. One day when you are old and you are 80 and you cannot walk and you are 90 and you now cannot talk and you are 100 and you can now not hear and you are 110 and now you cannot see and you are 120 and you cannot move. What do you say? Oh Allah, take me away. Wherever I am going, let me go there. Because now you are fed up. A true believer has hope. He says, no, oh Allah, I know you're taking me to a better place. My brothers and sisters, whether you are sick, whether you are ill, whether you are struggling with cancer, with AIDS, whatever the disease is, may Allah grant you cure. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Up to the last minute, even if you are suffering in pain, you must still be smiling, oh Allah, I know you're giving me something better. You must have hope. Up to the last minute, you must have hope. Remember that. Those are believers. Suddenly, you die, the angel separates the soul from the body and you are swimming straight in. You are swimming straight into a beautiful life. And then you say, wow, subhanallah, mashallah, what is all this man? Where are we? Hey, and you are so excited. That's the promised life. That's the promised life. Allah has promised you. Do you think Allah promised you? And this is why. Allah speaks about that promised life and Allah says two things are promised, not just one. Two things are promised. What is it? Heaven for those who deserve it. And you know what else is also promised for those who don't deserve it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. 
And as for those who reminded, listen to what Allah says. وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرًا Surah Zumar, speaking of the crowds, all this is promised. Allah says, the people who will be entering hellfire will enter hellfire in groups. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا فُتِحَتْ أَبَوَابُهَا when they are driven to hellfire, they get they will get to its door and then the door will be open for them. So you know when criminals are going into a jail, they walk to the jail and then when they are at the jail, the door of the jail opens, they are let in and then the door closes. Because they are criminals. Whereas when a person is going to paradise or to a good place, the door is already open and it's waiting for them and they go in and the door is open and they are excited. That's the difference. So Allah says, the people of hell, when they will be driven to hell in groups and they will get to its door, the door will be open for them and the keepers of the door of hellfire will ask them a question. What is the question? أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْكُمْ يَتْلُونَ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِ رَبِّكُمْ وَيُنْذِرُونَكُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا Didn't a messenger come to you? Didn't anyone come to you to remind you that one day you will have this problem here if you continue leading your life in such a bad way? Didn't anyone come to you to remind you that this day will come and that you are going to have this meeting today? They would say, but, uh, oh yeah, yeah, we, yeah, when we were alive, people came to tell us to stop all the bad that we were doing. Yeah, yeah, I remember, we remember. Well, you were promised. You were promised. This is the promised life for you. Astaghfirullah. May Allah not do that to us. Then Allah says, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا As for those who were conscious of their Rabb, those who were conscious of Allah, those who tried hard to please Allah, those who were conscious of their Maker, and where they are going, Allah says, they have been promised something. They will be driven into heaven in groups. In groups. When they get to its door, they will find it open. They will get to the door while the door will be open. The doors of heaven, how many doors of heaven are there? Eight doors. And how many doors of hell are there? Seven doors. Why? Because Allah's mercy is greater than His punishment. Someone asks you, how many doors of heaven? You say eight. How many doors of hell? Seven. Why? Because Allah's mercy is greater. He has more space in heaven. He has a greater heaven than a hell. So when they get there, the gatekeepers will say, Salamun alaykum tibtum fadkhuluha khalidin Oh, peace be upon you. You have indeed done that which was good. Congratulations, as we would say. So now you can enter here forever and ever. Enter what? Enter paradise, the promised life. So these people who will be entering paradise, may Allah make us from among them, I mean, they will be saying as a response to this, Alhamdulillahi alladhi sadaqana wa'da wa awratana al-arda natabawwa'u min al-jannati haythu nashah The first point, Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah. All praise is due to Allah who has been truthful in fulfilling the promise He made to us. Allah has promised you a certain life. You will thank Him the day He gives you that life. A life that has no problems, no issues, no difficulties, no hardship. Allah says, here is the life. And you say, Alhamdulillah, I thank you for being truthful to me. Your promise you have fulfilled. You granted us on earth and here is the heaven. We can move in it as we wish. As we wish. 
Another point, my brothers and sisters, when you came to the earth, you came with nothing, not even your clothes. No, you were born naked. No one came out of his mother's womb with a Levi's jacket and Ray-Ban sunglasses, no. And a little iPhone. No matter how much your mother was on her phone, you didn't come with a phone. Ma, you phone! <laughs> May Allah forgive us. Sit while is looking at me and I'm just thinking of this example. So, we came empty-handed. Guess what? We will leave exactly empty-handed. So what is in the middle? Your deeds only, nothing else. What did you do? D-O, that's it. Nothing else. What did you do? That's what makes the difference. Everyone came without anything. Everyone leaves without anything. I don't know how true it is. They used to say that the Chinese used to be buried with all their belongings and wealth. With all their money. Until one day a wise crack came and he said, hang on, I will just cash all that money. Let me put my check and you give me the cash. Then they stopped it. But I think that's not true. Actually, someone sent me an email saying it's not true. But the example is valid for us to say, if you are buried with your items, people will steal those items. People will steal. I know grave diggers from the people of other faiths who dig the graves because they are buried with a nice suit and clothing because they don't have their clothing. They dig the grave, they break out the coffin, they take out the clothing and the following morning they are wearing a suit and a tie. Where did you get it from? Ah, uh, supermarket, you know. MashaAllah. Astaghfirullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. In Islam you know you are enshrouded. That's it. You go home with a shroud. Where are you going? Back home. Where? Wherever I came from. My address. My true address. The address you have here in Zamboanga is only your address for a short period of time. After that, you get a permanent address. So Allah promised this to us. There are three categories of people. Those who will go to heaven forever. Those who will go to hell forever. And those who will go to hell for a short period of time and then they will shift to Jannah, to heaven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the first. Amen. Never lose hope. He will give it to you. He will give it to you. Inshallah. He is so merciful. Trust me. He will give it to you. By the will of Allah. Have hope and try. Try. So, what will I get now in this promised life? Let me tell you. Hadith Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu muttafaqun alayhi. Narration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I have prepared, Allah says, I have prepared for my good worshippers. For who? For my good worshippers. That which no eye has ever seen. That which no ears have ever heard or heard of. وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرٍ That which did not cross the heart of a human being. In our language, that which didn't even cross your mind. That's what we say in English. If it crossed your mind, in heaven is better. Think hard because I want to touch a topic that sometimes is misunderstood. If something crossed your mind, so nice, Remember, in heaven is better than that. If you heard about something so beautiful, remember, in heaven is better than that. If you saw something really nice, remember, in heaven is better than that. Why? Why? I tell you why. Because the earth, everything is dust. What do you think is beautiful? Tell me. A glass building? Well, glass is from dust, from sand. Apply heat and pressure and it becomes glass. Right? What else? Gold. Gold is from the mountains. Dig and start separating and you get certain stones and they will actually be gold. Ask me, in South Africa and Zimbabwe, we have the most gold perhaps in the world. What else? Platinum. What is platinum? Same thing. You go and mine it. What else? Oh, I need a leather jacket. Where is the leather from? It's from a cow. What else? Do you think you want to take all that to heaven? Hey, in heaven, I want a leather jacket. Come on, there won't be cows there. For all, you know what I mean? Subhanallah. You'll get something better than a leather jacket. I always used to give an example of my son. Now he's old, but now when he was young, he used to say, 
Dad, I want a Lamborghini. And I should tell him, no, we, I, I can't afford it. Number one and number two is we don't need it here. It's not a practical car. It's not a practical vehicle. So he says, inshallah, in Jannah, I will have one. I said, son, you will have the worst thing in Jannah. People will be just moving, flying straight where they want to go without a car. You will be in a little Lamborghini. There's no road. There's no tar. What are you going to do with it? And then Lamborghini, I want to tell you something, my brothers and sisters, to show you how this world is actually a deception. Can I, can I show you something? You will agree. Okay, the average age of you people here is perhaps 25 to 30. That's my guess, right? Average age. When you were perhaps 7 years old, 8 years old, okay? And even those who are older, you will understand this example better. What was the best car that was known on earth at the time? Best car, for example. So someone might say, hey, it was a Mercedes. Mercedes, okay? What was the Mercedes? It was called a 300D. You know, 300D. Okay? That was in 1985. Okay? It was when? Say 1985. There was a car. It was a very, very nice car. You can go and Google it. 300D Mercedes, 1985. Google it. Nobody today wants that car. How many years has it been? It's just been 25, 30 years. No one wants the car. Bring it, they won't even, even if you pay them to take it, they don't want to take it. But that time they were making dua, oh Allah, I can't afford this car, but Ya Allah, Jannah, give me a car like this. Okay? Now they don't want it. Now they don't want it. So today, what is the car? You want a Bugatti Venon, for example, or you want the new Mercedes V-Class or you want the S-Class Mercedes, not to say I'm a fan, but it is a good car. <laughs> you know what? Before you die, you will hate your own choice. You know why? There will be something totally different. Life moves. Allah is showing you that, hey, things here will change. You won't like what you chose for yourself. Allahu Akbar. Because everything is updated. If you say, look, mom, if you get me an iPhone 6 Plus, 128 gigs. I won't ask you for anything else. Wallahi, next year, you will be asking her for an iPhone 7. <laughs> Why? Because it's gone, it's outdated. You boast it for a while and it's over. But Allah says in Jannah, it is forever. While you are thinking, you get. <laughs> my favorite verse. One of my favorite verses. Allah says, in that promised life, Whatever the soul desires will be his or hers. What do you think of? It's in front of you. Before you even know it, it's yours. Alas, I'm thinking of some juice, of some fruit. I can already taste it in my mouth. Why? I'm in paradise. This is my place. I'm the boss and the king, subhanallah, of my paradise here. Allah is the Lord indeed. But you, Allah has honored you. Because you led a life where you are always remembering, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. Where do you want to go? The promised life. Remember those two in the womb that I told you talking to each other? Imagine if one said, look, you know what? I, listen carefully. If one told the other, look, this life, it's that's all. In this womb, there is nothing beyond the womb. Now we are struggling, we are suffering, and it's becoming tight here in the womb. Let me kill you and you kill me. I tie you with this umbilical cord around and, and I die and you die. So the one dies and the other one, no one is there to kill it because the other guy is already dead. What will happen? One will be born. When he's born, whew, that other guy killed himself. He didn't know what was coming. He lost out. Did you hear the point? Apply the same example in your life. If you get fed up of your life, you want to kill yourself, you want to cause harm, you will lose the real life. You follow the point? It's a very powerful point. This is why Allah says, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا Suicide is prohibited. Allah is indeed merciful upon you. No matter what you are going through, suicide is not an option. That's the Quran. You cannot change the Quran. Allah knows there is something better waiting for you. Wait for Allah's time. This is why you know when there is a premature birth, a lot of the times the lives of those infants is in danger. 
Because they've come out before the time. That medical reasons we might not be able to apply exactly the same example, but the example I'm giving you is when they do things to harm themselves, it's a problem. It's a major issue. It's a disaster. Don't do that. I want to give you another example. Have you ever had a nightmare when you are sleeping? So you are sleeping in the dormitory, for example, there are your colleagues sleeping also there. One person is dreaming and smiling of heaven and of good things and nice food and roasted chicken and deep fried chips with nice salt and beautiful cold drinks and so on. And he's just mm, in his sleep. And the other one, ah! what happened? <laughs> I'm sweating. Somebody just shot me dead. Somebody shot me. Well, when they shot you dead, what happened? You woke up, isn't it? Ah, I'm alive. Alhamdulillah. 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 I'm okay. Mashallah. So now what happened? The one sleeping right next to you was suffering and you were enjoying something sweet. The two did not know what was going on to each other. So, when you suddenly get up from something that was seeming so real, but it was not real. In your dream, it's real, very real. In my dream, I have eaten food. I have had so many things happen to me that was so lovely and I really thought it was so true. And when I got up, hey, there's nothing. I remember the example of a young boy in his sleep. He was being told, look, you know what? I want to give you a gift. He says, what do you want to give me as a gift? He says, I want to give you a thousand dollars. No, I want two thousand. He says, no, here is a thousand. Take it. No, I want two thousand. And while he's arguing, he woke up. When he woke up, he said, there is not one thousand. There is not two thousand. He quickly closed his eyes. Okay, okay, I'll do with a thousand. No problem. <laughs> I'll do with a thousand. No problem. That's not how it works. Subhanallah. When it comes to death, Allah says, حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونِ لَعَلِّي لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتُ كَلَّا When a criminal dies, a hypocrite dies, the person will say, Oh Allah, send me back. I want to quickly do good deeds. Remember the thousand? Let me take the thousand. Allah says, No way. It's not happening. No, it's too late. You are already in the hereafter, and that's it. So, my brothers and sisters, don't be at a loss. Enjoy your dream while you can. When you get up to reality, it is a totally different life. Totally different. How do you feel? You got up into the real life. One day, when you die, you will get up into the real life from this dream that we are in right now known as the life of this world so I told you two things very scary one is birth the other is death when a person is born it's really very scary for everyone it's painful fear of the unknown those two they don't know where they are going but when they came was there any regret do you regret that you were born no I was born well I tell you if you're a true believer you will not regret when you die. It's difficult, but you have to go through it. You have no option, just like you were born. You have to die. Allah says it in the Quran, very clearly in so many places, we created you. And He mentions the stages. He says, then we caused you to be born. And after that, we will cause you to die. As simple as that. So you need to be ready for this. Now people start arguing, what am I going to get there? What am I going to get? What am I going to get? I want to tell you. There are several categories of people. Some people do good deeds out of fear that we might go to hell. So we want to be protected from hell. Some people do good deeds and stay away from bad deeds out of hope to go into paradise. Because they want to go to paradise. Some people do good deeds and stay away from bad deeds out of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best is the third. But the other two are not wrong. They are not wrong. I want to ask myself a question. Did I fall into any one of those three categories? If the answer is no, 
well please fall into one of the three of them do good deeds either out of hope to go to heaven out of fear that you don't go into hell or out of the love of Allah but do some good deeds prepare for the day you are going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what will I get there everyone wants to ask the question the women they ask the question these men they are going to get the who what about me my sister you are the who what are you worried about Allahu Akbar did you hear that well, can I tell you a better answer than that? A better answer than that is when Allah says you will get what you want, He won't let you down. Never ever. Don't worry about what you will get. Just know the fact that whatever you want in Jannah, He will give it to you. The only condition is you need to be in Jannah. You need to be in paradise. That's the only condition. The problem is no salah, no ibadah, no worship, no modesty, nothing good. And we still are arguing about what am I going to get in Jannah. My brother, are you even going to go there in the first place? If you are going to go there and working towards it, you are not worried. The truth is I am not worried what I'm going to get in Jannah. I'm only worried about going to Jannah. That's all. Did you hear that? I am not worried. If you ask me, what do you want when you go to Jannah? I say, brother, I don't want anything besides going into Jannah. When I go there, I will decide. With this small brain of mine, I will only think of things that are not qualified to go into heaven. You want to describe the poor, I want to tell you, no matter what description you have, the hadith, the Quran says, in Jannah will be better than your mind can imagine. So don't worry. My sisters, who will you be with? I am not worried about that. Let me go to Jannah. I know when I go there, if I don't want to be with someone, I'll never see his face again. You know, there was a man who died and his wife looked at his face after he died and said, Alhamdulillah, the last time I will see this face. Salaamu Alaikum. <laughs> so upset. But that's not how it should be. You need to know Allah will not let you down. Allah will never let you down. Whatever you want, He will give you what you want. But you need to go to Jannah and speak in Jannah. Because in Jannah, your heart will be different. Your mind will be perfect. Your soul, your being will be absolutely perfect. There will be perfection for now. None of us are perfect. We all have defects and problems. Our brain is so small, we cannot even see the jinn who are listening to the talk, maybe. Or at least the angels who are here, let me not scare you. The angels who are here, they are definitely here. We don't see them. Why? We are so weak. We are imperfect. Allah didn't allow us to see. I can't even see beyond a certain point because of how many people they are. That's how weak we are. So don't worry. When you go there, Allah will give it to you as you want it then. People ask, well, will I be with my same husband in Jannah? My sister, just get to Jannah. Allah won't let you down. That's the answer. Just get to Jannah. Okay, you guys will have food. What about us, my sister? Just get to Jannah. Allah won't let you down. If you want and you think about it there, you will get it. But you know what? You will not think about certain things. You know, sometimes you, you're going on a holiday, right? Beautiful honeymoon, for example, or something. And your friend tells you, please message me, send me photos. You say, don't worry, I'm going to do it. Don't worry. And when you go, it's so beautiful. You forget about everyone. Just you and your husband or your wife. And you are so excited. You are enjoying, you are drinking and you are... I don't mean drinking alcohol, I'm talking about good juice, huh? inshallah. And you are enjoying yourself, mashallah, and you're really having a lot of fun. And you forgot about your friends. And when you are flying on your way back, you say, Ooh, I forgot about that person. It's been one week. They're going to feel very bad. And you quickly try to message them, Hey, you know what? I didn't have network. Stop lying. <laughs> you forgot them. Why? What you had was far better. Agree? It was so nice. It happens even when you go to the shop. And you see a bargain. Everything is one tenth of the price. Buy one, get ten free. Woo! We go, we forget about everyone. Come, come, come. Take up. How much you can? You forgot about the whole world. Why? It's a bargain. Be, by the time I go, we will lose. Everyone is buying everything. You forgot. Because it was too good. That's why. Too good. 
In Jannah, you will forget about everything of the dunya. What is in the dunya? Oh Allah, do you think anyone's going to say, Oh Allah, I had my gold, my this. The gold is finished, it's gone, it's thrown away. Gold is nothing. Allah gave it value for the dunya only. Otherwise, it's dust of the earth. Wallahi, it's dust. Go to Google, go to YouTube. Search how gold is mined or gold penny. You'll get a shock. It's just the dust like this and they start digging a little bit. They put, there is a water table they get to. For example, they take a bit of a, you know, a utensil. Sometimes it's silver. They want to look at it. Some people put a light. Some look at it with the sun and they start shaking it and moving it and they see this. They get a small speck. They move it. Some have a magnet. Some There are different ways of doing things and you get this and you actually small little sand particles. You bring them together and you, you put heat on it so that you make a small button. A button is a small size. And then that is gold. Wow. What happened? Value. Where did it come from? Dust. Dust. It's not even fit to go to Jannah. No, it won't be there. Trust me, it won't be there. No gold, no silver, no platinum, no cast, nothing. Why? Because that was all this dunya. Allah says, La aynun ra'at. Nothing that your eyes have seen. If your eyes saw it, it's not there. Yes! My husband's not going to be there. My eyes saw him. <laughs> The same body, the same features, the same person, the same attitude. He's not there. What will be there? What a handsome guy. Wow. <laughs> Who is this? And he speaks to you with so much respect. And he loves you. And he only looks at you and he's... Ah. And what's going on? Who are you? My name is Abdullah. <laughs> That's what it is, subhanAllah. It's amazing. Wow. You mean? <laughs> subhanAllah. You are excited. Why? Because Allah told you, you will get what you desire. You, what was in this world, you leave it in the world. Your body of the dunya is your body of the dunya. It's gone. When he looks at you, Subhanallah, he doesn't even know what sound to make because Subhanallah, he's shocked and gone and delighted and happy. Wouldn't you like to be someone who, no more makeup, it's automatic, Subhanallah. Flick, flick, and it changes. Flick, flick, and it's changing, Subhanallah. Amazing, you don't need to worry about weight, you don't need to worry about shape, you don't need to worry about size, you don't need to worry about health, you don't need to worry about attitude, you don't need to worry about anything, it's there. This is only human beings. What about the other things? Allah says, each one of you will have a garden. Can I explain to you the size of the garden? There is a hadith which is common. I won't go through the whole hadith, but I want to go through parts of it. It says, speaks about the last person to enter Jannah. The last person to enter Jannah. So when he's entering Jannah after he was in Jahannam for a while and he will enter Jannah, now remember this, it can either be me or you or we have to be better than that because this is the worst guy. This is the last person to enter paradise, the last one. So it's either me or you, may Allah not make us the last. But if we are, then this is what we will get. Listen, so Allah says, he comes and he says, Oh Allah, you know, it's a long hadith. He comes out of hellfire and so on and so forth. And then he says, Oh Allah, just grant me entry into this door, you know. And as the door opens and he's so shocked and amazed, you know, and he sees a huge light and he thinks that is Allah, but that's just the angel. And he wants to prostrate and he's shocked because the angel tells him, I am the, the doorkeeper of heaven. And then he says, Oh, and as he's going in and he goes into his own garden, and Allah tells him, Allah asks him, Oh my worshipper, would you be happy if we gave you whatever was on earth, completely the whole earth, only for you? Would you be happy? Now what does that mean? Let me translate it. It means on earth, whatever was there from the beginning of the earth, right up to the end of the earth, would you be happy if we gave you all of that only for you? Which means all the gold and all the silver and all the platinum and all of this and all of that. Allah is just asking, He's just asking a question. So He looks and He says, 
Oh, yes, I would be happy with that. I mean, that's too much for me and you. If you just build me a house worth a million dollars, well, that's enough for me here in Virginia. You know that? We don't need anything else. Maybe $500,000 every month, inshallah, it would do me good. You know, I could come to Zamboanga more often, inshallah. <laughs> but that's for the dunya. Imagine someone's offering you the whole earth only for you, only yours. And he says, yes. So Allah says, Oh my slave, I will give you. In fact, he says, yours is not just one time what the earth has. But you have that multiplied by two, multiplied by three, multiplied by four, up to ten times. It's only yours and it is in heaven, which means it's not even that which was on earth. It's better. Ten times. So you are one person. How much land do you have? Well, you have so much land that your eye will see and look up to the horizon. It's only yours. And even beyond the horizon, it's only yours. So how big is it? I cannot describe. What is in it? What will be on my land? So much land. Well, it will just be a huge happy family. Beautiful. Only those you want to see will be there. Only those you want to be with will be there. What will be on the land? Whatever you want. I'm calling it land, but that's the wrong word. Allah says, مَثَلُ الْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي وُعِدَ الْمُتَّقُونَ فِيهَا أَنْهَارٌ مِّن مَّاءٍ غَيْرِ آسٍ وَأَنْهَارٌ مِّنْ خَمْرٍ لَذَّةٍ لِلشَّارِبِينَ وأنهار من لبن لم يتغير طعمه وأنهار من خمر لذة للشاربين وأنهار من عسل مصفى ولهم فيها من كل الثمرات ومغفرة من ربهم الله speaks of five things he says in Jannah there will be rivers of pure, beautiful, palatable, drinkable water that is neither salty nor hard. Rivers in your garden. What is the meaning of Jannah? It means a garden. It means a garden. In your Jannah, water, rivers of water, pure water. No dirt in it, no nothing in it. Pure, drinkable, not salty and not hard water. Drinking. And after that, Rivers of pure fruit juice of your choice. Fruit juices of your choice. Proper squeeze juices of your choice. It's amazing. So suddenly you're thinking of a certain fruit. Say for example orange. Say apple. Say grape. But the grape of Jannah is different. This is why Allah says, when the people of Jannah see the fruit, they will think it is that in terms of name. Or maybe in terms of appearance, it will be totally different in terms of taste and in terms of the other qualities. Every time they are given something, they will think to themselves, Oh, this is what we had yesterday. Or this is what we had in the past. This is what we have had. Allah says, no, it just looks the same. It's different. You will never have the same thing twice in paradise unless you ask for it or you want it. Otherwise, every day will be better than the previous day. How do you want to go back on that day? So, rivers of pure juice and after that, rivers of milk. What type of milk? A different milk, not from the others of the cows. No, it's a special milk. It, it is white in color, pure. It is quenching of the thirst and it, the look of it, it is a whole river. Imagine you go to the river here or the ocean or somewhere down between Zamboanga and Tawi Tawi as you are going on the boat, subhanAllah. And what do you notice? Hey, this is honey, man. This is honey. It's not water. And you take it and it's pure. You put it in your mouth. Hey, what's going on? You can't imagine it, can you? It's milk. Imagine it's white, completely white. 
and imagine the speedboat moving with it. That propeller making the froth behind it and it's white upon white and you're cruising and it's all milk, subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. After a while there might be ice cream further down. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get us in goodness. It's just amazing. You can't imagine this. Allah says, don't worry. Let your mind wander. Because when you go there, it's better than what your mind had thought. If your mind thought about it, if your heart, it crossed your mind, Khalas won't be there. It will be better than that. So when you look at your husband, your wife, your children, your parents and so on, those who are with you, even some of your own enemies, if Allah were to grant us Jannah, may Allah grant it to us, we will be peaceful, we will be at peace, we will be happy, we won't have bad qualities. Have you ever noticed in the Quran, Allah never speaks about pain when it comes to paradise. There's no pain. There's nothing known as pain. There is no crying. Never has Allah spoken about crying in Jannah. Why? You cried on earth. Allah says, oh, let's go. My brothers and sisters, wouldn't we like this life? Beautiful life. Something that is promised to us in such an amazing way. And this is what Allah says. And then at the end of that verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ الثَّمَرَاتِ Allah will grant them in Jannah, in paradise, from all the fruits, anything they want, anything is theirs. So don't lose hope. Don't fight about what you will have, what you won't have. Wallahi, many times I have received questions, many times asking me, I want to go to heaven, but will my cat come with me? Wallahi, I'm not joking. People are so attached to the cat. Will my cat come to me? Now, I have a problem because if I say yes, I'm lying. If I say no, she's depressed. What's the point of going to Jannah? Mimi is not going to come with me. What's the point of going to Jannah? Mimi is not going to come with me. So I have a problem because you say yes, you are lying. And you say no, depressed. So you know what you have to say? When you get to Jannah, at that time, if you think of Mimi and you say, Oh Allah, I want Mimi, Mimi will be there. <laughs> That's the true answer. But you don't have to tell them that, you know what? When you go there, you won't ever, ever, ever think about Mimi. Because what you will have will be far better than Mimi. Subhanallah. Have you heard that, my brothers and sisters? Don't worry. You say, I will go to Jannah, but will my pet be there? Your pet, what pet? I have to tell you, okay, first go to Jannah. That's what I've been saying today. I said it before also. Let's go to Jannah first. When you are there, Allah promises you, whatever you think about will be yours. So if you can think about it, yes. I give you one hadith. Man sharib al khamra fi dunya lam yusrabhu fil akhirah. There's a hadith which says, whoever drinks alcohol, intoxicants in the dunya, they will not drink the wines of heaven. They won't. So someone will say, but Sheikh, didn't you tell us just now that in Jannah is whatever you think about? Can I tell you what? Allah will make you in such a way that you will never think about it. You won't even know. You won't be missing out as such, but you won't have it. So when you go there, some people will think about certain things, some people will not think about certain things. And I've given you the examples. So don't worry, the moral of today's lecture is let's all work hard to get to the promised life. More than we are worried about what is in the promised life, it is there. Work hard to get there. How do you work hard? Subhanallah. You worship Allah alone. You worship Allah alone. And at the same time, you need to do good deeds. That's it. Anything else? No. Worship Allah alone and do good deeds. What are good deeds? Deeds that were taught by Muhammad are good and deeds that were not taught by him are not good. That's it. So, let me read for you the verse. The verse where Allah speaks about the angels. And the angels telling the believers, those who did good deeds, but you know what? 
You have a beautiful place from a very forgiving Lord. تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا. Have you ever heard that before? Put up your hand. Have you heard that verse before ever being recited? Put up your hand. So many people have heard it. What does it mean? It starts off like this. إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا. Those who say, our Rabb is Allah. I worship Allah alone. Our Rabb is Allah. Rabbuna Allah. My Rabb is the one who made me. Thumma staqamu. So the first condition is, those who say, my Rabb is Allah. Then they are straight. Thumma staqamu. They are straight. They are steadfast. What is steadfastness? To be on the straight path. You try your best to walk on the path. They are straight. Two qualities. What are the qualities? Inna ladina qalu rabbun Allah. Those who said my Rabb is Allah. Thumma saqamu. Then they were straight. Before they die, tatanazzalu alayhimu al-malaika. The angels will inform them, will come down to them, telling them, la takhafu, don't fear. وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Don't be sad. وَأَبْشِرُوا Good news to you. بِالْجَنَّةِ Of the promised life of paradise. أَلَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ That which you were promised. سبحان الله نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاؤُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ We are your protectors in this world and in the next. Who are the protectors? Allah. And Allah sends the angels to protect. There are angels known as Hafala. These are angels of protection. Allah says, We are your protectors. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ For you, you can have whatever your soul desires and whatever you call for, it will be yours. That's what they are told. Before they die, as you are dying, you are given the information. Don't worry. You are about to go. We are taking your soul away. Good news. We are giving you good news. Subhanallah. May Allah let that happen to us. Imagine, you are about to go and you are given good news. Hey, don't worry. No need to fear. No need to worry. And Allah will give you, we are your protectors in the dunya and in the akhirah. Allah will give you what you wish, what you desire. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is the recompense of the good deeds that you did while you were in the short life. Short life. How short was it? 60 to 70 years. After that, you need to long to meet with Allah. We want to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why death is looked at as a gift to a believer. But you are not allowed to take your own life. And you are not allowed to take the lives of others. It's Allah who chooses and decides. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So, in this way we will be earning Jannah. In this way we will be smiling forever. In this way, inshallah, we will be earning the reward of all the tests and the difficulties and the hardships that we have been through in this world. This life is full of hardship. This life will be full of difficulties. This life will be full of toiling. If you want food, you will have to work. Then the food will come. If you want something, you have to sweat. Then with your sweat, you get something. Otherwise, it doesn't just come. But in the Akhirah, no way. You don't even need to relieve yourself. It's gone. Your body will be perfect. The scent that will emanate from you, that will come from you, will be absolutely amazing. Everything as per your wish. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. May He grant us Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. I came to Zambawanga. Usually and normally, I speak for 45 minutes and I close the topic. And today I decided that no. It's not like I come to Zambawanga every day. Not only is it at the end of the alphabet, but it is also right in the southernmost part of the Philippines. So you know, may Allah make us come again and again. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, I love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I may not know you personally, but trust me, our souls have met somewhere before, 
and inshallah they will meet somewhere again if Allah wills and until we meet again by the permission of Allah wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad subhanallahi bihamdi subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk wa assalamu alayk